Hello, it's uh, Rio Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a midday review of the European markets from an intermarket analysis perspective, as always. Okay, let's try and review exactly what's happening here with regards to the uh, the actual movements in global indices. Uh, before I do that, be sure to visit www.cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that healthy uh, new bonus uh, or new account uh, opening uh, offer of 25%. Uh, they are the leading spread betting CFD brokerage and specialists. Alternatively, you can visit the educational site www.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay, now in terms of uh, the uh, actual positioning of uh, global markets, you have the um, Asian markets overnight, certainly negative, the Nikkei down, uh, the Hang Seng was down, uh, the uh, Shanghai certainly managed to uh, just about close fat, uh, flat after being uh, negative for most of the session. Now that was on the back of the uh, weaker export and import data out of China, and that certainly uh, set a risk off tone overnight. The Aussie and the Kiwi certainly suffered as well, as uh, post Fisher's comments of, uh, uh, of uh, seeing the uh, whites of the eyes of inflation, etc., and the stirrings of inflation. So that certainly triggered the dollar certainly to uh, potentially put in a base. Now let me bring up the dollar index and see exactly how it's behaving today. There we go. Okay, so dollar index now, you have gap fill support below, but we are into this potential previous uh, re resistance equals support type scenario. Okay, in terms of the actual dollar itself. Uh, the thrust higher is certainly retracing a fib 35 percent retrace and you are looking to potentially move higher provided we have strong economic data in the afternoon now the u.s data should be out shortly we have the red book is certainly out and that's certainly come out stronger okay and then we have the uh, iebd economic optimism uh, although we do have uh, i think we have had some other uh, u.s data the optimism data has come out and that's certainly come out negative so that certainly will be interesting to observe and see exactly how the markets react now, all eyes and focus will be on Chinese data. Uh, the rally in crude certainly has been very impressive this morning. I've just been stopped out in the FTSE short uh, very impressively. Uh, certainly uh, a thrust higher here. Let me just bring up a chart of crude. Now, the chart of crude on a daily chart, you can see that it is screaming for that 40.3 level. Now, from my perspective, given the fact that uh, fundamentals have to align with technicals, and with weaker Chinese import and export data, it certainly is not aligning. Although, having said that, you have had the stronger data out from Germany, and you have had stronger data out from France as well, to a large extent. Okay, and uh, that certainly is helping the uh, the oil market to to a large extent. Now, having said that, you have had weaker UK BRC data. Okay, you had Moody's downgrade growth as well. Uh, oil with regards to oil, Kuwait willing only. Well, Kuwait willing to freeze pot potential production only if Iran is on board. And we all know the Iranians are not on board. So therefore, that should be a net net negative for oil. Not, I mean, let alone the fact that um, you have concerns or ongoing concerns with regards to uh, the um, uh, weaker Chinese uh, data, obviously raising growth concerns again. And that should be net net negative for oil. But that, is, that doesn't seem to be the case at this current juncture, which is uh, very interesting. OK, now we've had copper certainly holding resistance today uh, and uh, the same scenario as yesterday. Copper certainly putting in a topping uh, tail here or a potential reversal here at the 200 MA. Certainly holding on the 60 minute chart. It hasn't made a new high. It's actually made a lower high. And you can see it's bearish engulfing candle uh, certainly going in. Also with regards to gold, certainly is holding that potential resistance as well. Uh, OK, certainly uh, putting in a potential doji again. Uh, you also have zinc, you also have iron ore, both potentially holding resistance. Okay, so and given the fact that the dollar is obviously now coming into support, given the stronger US data that's come out as well, uh, with regards to the red book, that certainly will help the dollar to a large extent. Now, the US markets, again, will be looking and focus on the, uh, on the weaker Chinese data. That will be the main focus, okay? Now, we've had, uh, in terms of the FTSE, you've had Foxen's profit drop due to London property. And the uh, concerns with regards to BHS and a potential collapse owing 1.3 billion is certainly negative for the retail sector. Okay, right. In terms of uh, economic data, other than that, really, we've had uh, yes, German production certainly stronger. Unemployment rate uh, came in line in, in uh, for CHF. Uh, trade balance data slightly better in terms of France. Uh, industrial output weaker in terms of uh, Spain. Uh, Euro European GDP came in more or less in line on a quarter on quarter basis. And the optimism index out of the US certainly has come out weaker. We've had um, weaker data from uh, Canadian housing starts. So that certainly isn't bullish at all. Okay, and like I said, red book sales certainly has slightly come in better than expected. Now, Mr. Carney has raised Brexit concerns this morning. So again, that is a potential risk-off scenario again. 
Uh, and certainly indicating a potential move lower, okay? We have had concerns with regards to Italian banks last night. Also, that certainly is a risk off event. Now, let's look at the actual markets from a technical point of view, okay? Let's bring up the uh, Euro stocks first of all. Now, I was short Euro stocks this morning down here, okay? Covered my position, attempted to go long, okay? Closed out early, given the fact that this was uh, certainly showing uh, a weakness, given the fact that uh, on the 60 minute chart, we had this bear flag formation, the HS formation was in play. As you can see here, we were consolidating, consolidating, awaited a long time, and it was time to exit, given the fact that we were still below the neckline, and you are looking for lower lows, lower highs, and for the bear flag to play out based on the fact that Chinese imports and exports are weaker, and therefore Europeans would certainly suffer. Also, given the fact that the Euro USD as well, folks, was above the 1.10 level and still remained so, you're currently at 1.1040. Okay, that double top still holding, but uh, certainly isn't showing weakness at this uh, region. So given the fact that the Euro USD is above the 1.10 level, again, that is generally considered to be a risk-off event for uh, equities globally. Okay, given the risk aversion trade, and given the fact that the Euro is, is a potential fair, uh, fair trade, or shall we say a safe haven trade, given the anti-QE nature of the ECB. Okay, also with regards to the German bonds, this is an interesting insight as well with regards to the bonds. Now, let me just bring up the German bonds for you on a daily chart. You can clearly see here we are looking to potentially make a, a lower high and potentially triggering off a H&S formation. So you can clearly see here we're consolidating. We've put in that topping tail. We've moved higher. We've rejected and we've made a lower high ever since. So if this starts to move lower, then you know that uh, the uh, yield is certainly starting to uh, potentially increase. And that will obviously mean that the ECB is not going to do QE, especially given the fact that German data today was stronger, French data stronger, yesterday factory orders stronger. Hence the reason why the euro is appreciating on the expectations that the Germans will certainly force the uh, uh, force Draghi's hand to potentially uh, obviously uh, stick with just a uh, basis cut instead as opposed to more additional QE, given the fact that the Germans are certainly opposed to it regardless. As you can see here in the 60 of 240 minute chart, Clearly a H&S formation, okay, you've got your right shoulder here brewing and you're looking for a potential move lower. A lower bond, obviously, you, as you all know, means higher euro, higher euro, equals bearish for equities, okay? So that certainly is a scenario that we're facing right now, and that's interesting given the fact that Chinese data is certainly in the background, and that certainly is uh, insert, uh, 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 asserting a, a negative or a bearish influence, okay? Again, crude oil certainly is, is being distorted to a large extent and is masking the weakness in this market, so again, that certainly needs to be focused on as well. Okay, right. Uh, in terms of the uh, German DAX, now German DAX certainly has sold off initially, uh, given the concerns from China, etc., then pushed higher. You have put in a potential intraday double top now. You put two topping tails in at gap fill resistance, and therefore you're looking for a potential move lower on the German DAX. Okay. Uh, give, having said that, the German DAX in a daily chart, let's see where your position was still holding that resistance after we've closed the gap. And looking to potentially move lower 60 minute chart you had the hns formation that has been negated unfortunately now so i'll get rid of the neckline and that gap fill resistance really is the um, is the one to watch okay for now uh, any uh, sell-off will be uh, potentially coming into support at 9600 from my perspective and certainly looking to potentially move higher okay now bringing up the uh, french cac let's bring up the french cac okay so cac failed to close that gap that certainly isn't a good sign, given the fact that uh, we had this stellar rally. So the French CAC certainly remains the weakest link from my perspective. We did close the gap below, and we certainly bounced on the French CAC. Quite an impressive bounce at that as well. Okay, so looking for a potential thrust here. Okay, so again, re resistance will be solid at 4440 gap fill, and you are looking for a potential retracement before we start to... Uh, I mean, we are going to uh, hold this base now. I don't expect the 4370 level to be broken unless the US markets are overtly, overtly bearish. Okay, so certainly bear that in mind. Okay, now the FTSE 100, this is an interesting one. The inside bar certainly is attempting its best at holding, given the fact that, uh, as we all know, Brent certainly just hit a potential new high. Uh, if you look at the chart of Brent, if I bring up the chart of crude for you, or Brent, sorry, for you, you can see that we've certainly uh, thrusted higher here on the four hour chart, daily chart, you've broken out that resistance. The next real resistance level is at 45. Now, it's very hard to envisage 45 being hit, given the fact that, uh, like I said, China concerns. Okay, so again, it's going to be very hard to uh, fathom that. I can't see it going higher. It certainly seems to be a another iron ore led short squeeze from my perspective. But again, uh, markets and price action always are king. You can uh, certainly wait and uh, the market will, <laughs> will certainly test you. Okay, all right. Uh, the... Um, 
as the famous quote says, the market will be irrational and illogical, uh, can, can remain irrational and illogical longer than you and I can remain solvent. So again, uh, watch out for this pattern. Okay, so the FTSE 100 on a daily chart is struggling uh, to potentially move higher and break above this previous support equals resistance at 6220 and therefore looking for weakness. Now the weekly chart itself is uh, into that uh, key diagonal trend line resistance, although we have slightly pushed above it. And uh, we are still in those lower lows, lower high bandwagon, okay? 60-minute chart, the FTSE, clearly you can see we have a bear flag formation. This 8 o'clock candle in the morning led by China, weaker Chinese data certainly is in control and looking to potentially thrust the FTSE 100 lower. You have this right shoulder in play. You're looking for the FTSE to reject and move lower, okay? So HNS target is 6015, so watch out below on the FTSE itself. Again, Brent will uh, have a lot to say with regards to the FTSE uh, uh, moving higher or not, so, okay? So keep an eye on Brent crude. Also, the, uh, the uh, crude oil as well, right? The FTSE itself, uh, we approach gap fill. We put in a topping tail. We put a reversal candle in now. Any uh, sell-off will be, will find support on that 6140 zone. And that way will be the area that you're looking to reverse, okay? Right, I think that's a market wrap. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.